Hey folks, welcome to Building a Better Apocalypse. My name is Quill, and today we're building a workshop. This is one of my recent designs, and while not the most amazing or intricate build, it's a project I've wanted to make for a while, and I like how it's turned out. It's a workshop, so of course we've got shelves, storage boxes, and crafting stations, but that's not all. Hidden above the doorway is a cozy nook that we'll be using as a bedroom, but it could also be set up as extra storage. On the side of the shop, separated from the outside world by a chain link fence and some tarps, we have the garden slash outdoor kitchen. May not be the best way to protect our crops, but damn if it doesn't look good. Lastly, littered around the base are various collections of junk, ranging from tires and motors to construction mats and pallets. They don't add much in the way of protection, but that's okay. It's supposed to make it look more like an actual workshop, and I think the material stacks help pull that off. And just to be clear, everything shown here is available in Alpha 20. No mods are needed, but we will tap into the creative mini for things that can't be crafted, looted, or purchased. For those who aren't in the know, if you need to access the creative menu, press F1, then type CM and press enter. Afterwards, you'll be able to open the creative menu by pressing U, and if you click this symbol here, you'll toggle dev blocks on to open up even more possibilities. As a final note to anyone following along with the build, before each major section, I'll provide a list of everything we need to complete it. Don't worry about writing it all down though, because there is a full list of materials, decorations, and textures used available in the description. That should about cover us, so let's get started. First up is the foundation. We'll need to dig out a 5x10 area and fill it in. Although I'm using concrete shapes for this build, if you're following along and don't have access to them, no worries. This shed can be built with wood or cobblestone without suffering any structural issues. I just don't feel like having to upgrade blocks in between shots. Pick a side to call the front and then add a row of five sheet blocks along it. We'll also add three rows of half sheets on the sides. This will help cover the divot between the foundation and the dirt so it doesn't look like an ankle snapping waiting to happen. On the left side, fourth block from the back, we need to dig out a single space and add a cube block then add a pillar 1 meter plate directly next to it. With the foundation down, next on the list are the walls. We'll begin by making a frame around the outside of the foundation. The frame needs to be 5 blocks high along the sides and back. We'll also want to leave a 2 block opening for our side door. Over on the front, we'll want to stack three cube halves on each side of the opening and then line the top two rows with cubes. We're gonna add a six row to our walls, except this one won't be a complete loop. Instead, we'll be leaving a three block gap on the front and back side to later turn into windows. Above the gaps we just made, we'll add a line of 5 cubes, and on top of those, we'll place a cube in the middle with wedge 60 and wedge 60 tips on each side to make a slope. With the walls in place, we're left with an important decision. Roof or no roof? I think we'll go with roof. We'll begin by lining the sides of the top two rows with wedge 60 and wedge 60 tips. And once those are down, we'll add a row of ramps along the top of the wall. We 
we'll connect the wedge 60 tips on the front of the shop to the back of the shop by using even more wedge 60 tips. On the next section, we'll use wedge 60 inclines to close the openings and then seal the middle with cube halves. Inside the shop, line the sides of the ceiling with ramps. For the next part, we're going to add an overhang to the front and back sides of the roof. We'll begin by placing ramp incline half left and right blocks against the corresponding ramps on each side of the roof. After that, we'll rotate and place wedge 60 tip half left and right blocks on the ends of the ramp incline blocks to continue the overhang. Now we can place some wedge 60 incline half left and right blocks on the new ends and connect in the middle with a cube quarter. With the shelf of the shop complete, we'll shift our focus to the inside. We need to set up the back wall shelving, side wall shelf, and the bedroom nook. For the back wall shelf, we'll place a line of plate blocks on the third row and then extend the ends by an extra block. We'll place some pole bracket corners on the middle sides and then run them to the floor with poles. The remaining sides of the shelf can then be framed with poles and the missing spots sealed with pole corners. I want to add a second, smaller shelf to the side of the shop. To do so, we'll place three scaffolding planks along the second row of the wall, as close to the doorway as possible. Lined up with the block closest to the door, use a pillar 0.5 meter block to make a shelf leg. On the side further away from the door, make another shelf leg, but do it in the block non-adjacent to the shelving. The offset will hardly be noticeable after we decorate. On the fourth row above the doorway, place three scaffolding plank supported blocks on each side, then connect them with scaffolding planks. To reach the nook, we can add a ladder in the corner and then line the sides of the scaffold with scaffolding ramp filler. Shifting our focus to the outside, we're ready to build some framing on the doorway and windows and also add some plant shelves. Using wedge 60 tip half blocks, place a line of three above the doorway and then cap them off with wedge 60 half outside corners. For the windows, we'll frame the space directly above and below the gaps using ramp incline filler on the top and wedge 60 tip half blocks on the bottom. As for the plant shelves, we'll place some scaffolding plank supported blocks on the sides of each window and around the front doorway. And with those done, we can move on to the final building portion, the garden. Starting at the front left corner of the shop, we'll measure a space of nine blocks and make a four block tall pillar using poles on the outside corner. This can be repeated on the back side as well. At the top of the two pillars, use pole corner bracket left and right blocks to start a horizontal beam towards each other and the shop. We can then complete the beam using poles.
To close out the building portion, we'll place trellis squares all the way around the large opening between the beams. And now that we're done with construction, it's time to discuss our paint scheme. This build was meant to be a rustic workshop, so I wanted to reflect that by using a lot of wood textures and some neutral dark tones. Starting inside the shop, we'll paint the walls with wood siding log cabin and then cover the floors with wood old. Truthfully, you can leave the foundation as concrete and the final product would still look good. It really just comes down to preference. Kind of in the name, but just to be clear, we'll be using wood ceiling texture on the ceiling. For the back wall shelf, we'll use rough cut wood on the stilts and edges, and then use wood barricade on the shelf plates. Slightly different, for the side wall shelf, we'll want to use beer cooler side on the poles and plate edges, and follow up by using wood barricade on the plate centers. For the bedroom, since the floor is made out of scaffolding, there are two available painting regions. I'm using plywood as the scaffolding center and wood barricade as the scaffold edge. Over on the outside, we'll use wood siding tan for the walls. Wood siding blue and green are also valid choices, but they just aren't what I wanted to use. For the roof, we'll use shingles asphalt to cover the top and wood ceiling on the bottom of any overhangs. With the windows, I decided to go with shingles asphalt on the top and sides, and wood siding for the bottoms. The doorway is slightly different, with wood siding white being used for the sides instead of shingles asphalt. Similar to the small shelf inside, we'll use beer cooler side and plywood for the exterior plant shelves. Finally, for the garden, we'll paint the entire structure with rough cut wood. We're in the home stretch, building is done, painting is finished, and all that's left is decorating. Just so we're clear, I won't be calling out every single decoration that gets placed. All items being used have been listed, but we'll only go over the important ones and whatever the thought process was behind that section. This is to save me time and sanity with scripting, recording, and editing. Strictly selfish, but I'll live with it. Let's start with the interior. For the back wall, I wanted to make sure that the workbench, forge, and cement mixers were covered. The forge was placed on the right side of the wall, with the bench directly next to it. As for the cement mixer, it'll go by the side door. Personally, I hate looking at the forge. The model is kind of ugly, and in most of my builds it gets hidden away. This one ain't any different. Using some junk pallets and storage boxes, we can fill in the area in front of the forge and to the left of the bench. To obscure it even further, but also to ensure we still have access to the forge, We'll cover the top with shutters. Wood, iron, or steel, all three options look pretty good. For the shelving above the bench, we could load it full of crates, but that would be pretty ugly. Instead, I put a stack of wood, some cardboard boxes, and other junk as filler, then added a few loot room crates so it looks good. This sidewall doesn't matter too much. I don't have a specific plan for it, so do with it what you will. It could be set up as extra storage, or with another crafting station, or even with random junk, like you see here. This wall though? Big plans. Storage first, we'll place a hardened chest on the floor and a wood crate on the shelf. Toss in some junk like firewood, a plant, maybe a pallet of stuff, and it looks pretty good, right? But what if I told you it could look better? Remember how we offset one of the legs for this shelf? Well, because we did that, we can now do this. Boom. Tarp. 
We don't have much space for our bedroom, but we'll want to make sure that the important things are covered first. Boop. And now that the bedroom has a bed, let's fill the rest up with some useless crap. I decided to place a pile of bricks at the foot of the bed, along with a barrel and table on the wall. This gives us some elevated spots to place stuff, like a bag, a plant, or even a laptop. See this big opening behind me? This is what we would call a hazard. We need a wall, but also not quite a wall. Using fence tarp falling left blue and right blue, we can balance these on the scaffolding fillers from earlier. We can also use curtains as a makeshift door. Obviously it won't open and close, but by adding a pillar 0.25 meter on the side, it'll look like a rod the curtain would slide on. That'll about do it for the interior. Let's move outside. For the entryway, I wanted to go with a large set of double doors, but I also don't want to use garage doors. After playing around with it for a bit, I think we've got a decent solution. We'll start by tossing a 3x3 rolling door in the opening, and then add a green shipping container door frame on the outside. Finish the piece by adding shipping container door left and shipping container door right on the sides. For the windows, we'll toss some window store three-sided full and two-sided full in the openings, then add potted plants to our shelves. On the side of the shop, I started adding piles of tires, junk, and other random stuff. Near the back, I decided to build a larger firewood stockpile that's pretty simple to make. Just drop two firewood A and Bs down, and then place a firewood C on top. Next, add two tarp fence pieces on the sides, then some ramp sheets and ramp sheet ends to close up the top. Afterwards, frame it with some pillar 0.25 meter blocks, and then you can close it in with a chain link door on the back. For the back side of the base, I wanted to focus more on construction materials and making it look like a stockpile. After placing a dumpster, I added a drywall stack along with wood and metal pipe stacks. From there, it's a matter of sprinkling in some pallets of junk and maybe some non-explosive barrels. I originally wanted to park one of those neat working stiff trucks where the stacks of mats are, but it didn't quite work out. It looked great all the way up until it exploded on me and destroyed half of the draft build. That was a lot of fun. So yeah, if you're thinking about putting a truck anywhere nearby, maybe bump the build up to concrete. Anyway, let's move on to the garden. Starting at the back corner by the pallets, we're gonna line each side of the trellis thing with some tarp fences. If built correctly, we'll be able to fit four tarp fences in each opening with a single gap left in the middle. Be sure to use a mixture of falling and sagging tarps along with the normal style to help break up the monotony. Drop a chain link fence on the back and side gaps we left, and then place some doors on the front gap and shop side. It ain't a garden if we can't plant anything, so grab some farm plots and put five in each corner. This will give us 20 plots ready to go for a variety of crops.
since they're the only stations we're missing, we'll add a campfire in the middle and a chemistry bench on one side of the garden. We'll then fill in the other gap with some storage or a barrel. As a final addition, I want to place two more sets of farm plots outside of the garden. They'll be for taller crops like corn or maybe some flowers to make paint. Of course, we'll want to add some extra potted plants on the sides for constant greenery. And that's it! The build is complete and ready to use. This project was a lot of fun to make. For a while I've wanted to build something that would work as an all-in-one early game base, and I think we succeeded. We've got a nice workshop for our crafting, a bedroom nook to catch some Z's, and a garden to kick back and relax in. All in all, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. If you enjoyed this build, and if this is the kind of stuff that piques your interest, consider leaving a like or subscribing. It helps to grow the channel and lets me know I'm doing something right. Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it, and as always, y'all have a good one.